This week I reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and I'm super grateful to you for following my journey, for watching, and I wanna just hang out with you today, talk a little bit about my story, my journey, and what's next. Storytelling has always honestly been my passion ever since I was a kid. My dream though at the time was to be like a local news reporter. I remember every night I would like watch the news at the five o'clock, the 5.30, the six o'clock. And as a kid, all I wanted was to just like grow up and, and host the local news and just do breaking news and, and just tell stories in a way that was impacting people and my community. And I got a little bit drifted from that because I think the way media has changed so much. Obviously TV is not what it was, you know, at the time I was growing up and now it's YouTube now it's Facebook now it's TikTok and I'm really like lucky and excited to be part of this journey and be part of this ecosystem so I want to share a little bit about my journey because I do get this question a lot I studied international business and finance so I was always into like global business and economics and I went to George Washington University in Washington DC moved to New York did the whole consulting route and then I got laid off from my consulting job so I joined MTV and I remember I was working at MTV News as like an assistant so I would do everything from writing blog posts editing articles publishing articles um, they even taught me how to film with a DSLR and I always thought about my time at MTV News as like graduate school I learned how to do all the things in media but for a company and I remember one weekend I was on call because Justin Bieber was rumored to be breaking up up with Selena Gomez and my boss was like I really need you to be on call in case it happens you know doctors are on call and here I was living in New York City but I was on call because Justin Bieber might break up with Selena Gomez I really questioned my life and that's when um, I started to apply to like other real news organizations so I applied to PBS CNN Al Jazeera CNBC and I got a job at CNBC and I remember at first I wasn't that excited about it because I was like you know what it might be a little bit too niche a little bit too heavy on the stock market this was around the time that tech was becoming super sexy. You had Airbnb and Uber really coming of age and all my friends either wanted to become entrepreneurs or were becoming entrepreneurs. Tech was becoming cooler than Wall Street. I worked as a TV producer and um, I got to do some really cool stuff, meet some really cool people. And then an opportunity came my way in 2016 where I did a one-way ticket from New York to Singapore and I moved to Singapore. I had never been to Southeast Asia at all. I got to do more things. I got to do live television. My boss came up to me and said, hey, we want to launch a YouTube channel. I looked at him and I said, I didn't move from Singapore to do a bunch of YouTube videos. I could have done that in America. And he said, I wouldn't discount the future growth of YouTube. And this was only five years ago. So I did it. I went all in and I went to Huawei. I went to Tencent, Xiaomi. I traveled throughout Asia and made like vlogs. It was really cool. I was very lucky. I was getting to be a vlogger for a major news network. But then I realized anytime I would do videos like with my iPhone in selfie mode, even the iPhone 7 at the time, the videos would do way better than when I had a camera guy with a nice DSLR. And I realized audiences want to connect with an individual, not a company. So after a couple of years of scaling the CNBC YouTube channel with a team, there was 10 of us, I realized so many people that were getting like more followers and more views as one man bands. The pandemic happened and it was July of 2020 and I couldn't travel anymore with CNBC because of COVID and I was stuck to my couch making YouTube videos for CNBC on my couch. It was really a hard time in my life. I didn't have like a lot of friends. I didn't have any family. I couldn't travel. The gyms were closed. And then it happened. I got a call. The business was not doing well due to the pandemic and my job was being terminated. It was crazy. I mean, all I knew for years and years was CNBC. I lived with them. I lived in Hong Kong, Singapore and New York with, with the company and it was truly terrifying. It was truly scary and it was really hard for me. So booked a one-way ticket back to the US, moved back in with my parents. And then after a couple weeks of just like resetting yoga meditation swimming journaling reading a lot i went to apply for jobs and i remember i applied for jobs at like airbnb and all these things and i had some contacts at big tech companies i was hitting them up and then i remember i was like i felt this feeling in my gut every time i would apply for a job and uh and it was it wasn't a good feeling and i remember thinking like you're supposed to feel excited you know you might get a job at this cool tech company free lunches you know and I, I knew intuitively my gut, literally it was coming from my gut, did not want to work for a company again. I knew deep down it was time to go on my own. So I did it. My favorite number is 10. So I launched 10, 10, 2020. I launched with zero YouTube subscribers, zero, pretty much everything. And I said, I'm going to make three videos per week, no matter what on YouTube. And I was able to have some savings. So I hired a video editor to help support me. To be honest, it feels really exciting. And I'm really touched and honored. I think since I went independent, since I left CNBC, 
ABC and became my own brand or whatever you want to call it. I, I became a video creator as an independent person. This feels the sweetest victory. Two years ago, I decided I was going to start this YouTube channel. I started with zero subscribers and I remember I was super excited, but also like, okay, if I do this, I'm going all in. I saw so many people start YouTube channels and give up after three or four months. The only way I would get past that like initial barrier is if I committed to consistency. So I was able to use some savings, hire an editor, and I told him we're gonna do three videos per week no matter what. And some of you guys have been like here for that journey of those three videos, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for a year. So three videos per week no matter what, and we never missed a week. I believe that Done is better than perfect, especially when you're first starting out. I believe if you have to choose between quantity or quality, you go for quantity because in the process of doing it every day and working on videos, you're gonna get to quality. It's impossible to not do something a lot and not get good at it, it's impossible. And in the same way, if you wanna learn how to surf or learn how to play piano, you just gotta do it. I know some people, and I would get into debates with people who said, no, do one video a month on YouTube, but make it really good, make it really solid, make it the best thing you've ever put out. And I would say, no, nah, I, I don't have the patience for that. And, and I just I just want to do it my way. Obviously, all the videos were not the greatest. Um, and I even told my editor, I said, I want to look back at our work every three, four or five months and be embarrassed about our work from six months, you know, four months ago, because that means we're getting better. And I think it's been a really exciting journey. It's been really fun. A lot of people ask me, like, you know, how have you made money? Because my subscribers are relatively low for what YouTube can pay someone to support themselves fully. And I'm really lucky for Facebook and TikTok because I've monetized those a lot more than YouTube. I love those platforms. I love getting to tell a story and knowing I'm gonna put it on multiple platforms. That's also like insurance too, right? Uh, I did a documentary with, with my camera guy and editor in, uh, in Latin America. And we spent so many weeks just on one documentary about the adoption of Bitcoin in El Salvador. We knew, I was like, okay, well, if YouTube doesn't take this video and push it out, at least there's Facebook, at least there's TikTok. And, you know, it kind of diversifies your content a little bit so that's where I stand now and it was cool to reach the hundred thousand milestone recently it felt really surreal because even though I have I think 600,000 on TikTok and 800,000 on Facebook it still feels the sweetest because I know how hard it is to grow on YouTube and I know how valuable it is when someone subscribes to you on YouTube so again thank you I myself you know don't subscribe to many people on YouTube um, so here we are and I feel like I feel like I'm, I'm really excited I'm proud of the work that that I've done and my team has done on this channel and I'm so excited for what's to come. So that's a little bit about my journey. That's where I've been so far. And now I just wanna talk about what's next. I make videos about tech, money, cultures. The most proud work that I've done probably have been the documentaries about inflation, particularly in countries like Turkey, Argentina, and Lebanon. I wanna to continue to do more of those kinds of videos and I wanna do them like more in depth. I wanna do them with a better production value. I wanna make them longer. I wanna interview more people. So hopefully I can get myself as a creator and as a business person to the point where I can spend more time, where there might be less uploads per week, per month on this channel, but they're gonna be more in depth. They're gonna be longer and higher quality. So I wanna thank you for joining me on this journey. I want you to like message me, let me know any questions you have. I'm gonna do another video like this, question and answers with you. I wanna leave you with this. I, I don't want, I don't just wanna like talk about myself. I wanna leave you with something. And I think the one thing that I've learned in the past two years on this journey is to commit to consistency. There were so many times where I posted a YouTube video and it wouldn't break a thousand views, but I knew that I'm just gonna have to keep going, right? And I didn't care that much when it happened because I said, well, I've already committed to one year of this, three videos per week. And I think what happens with so many of us in life, especially as content creators, but a lot of times in life, even if you have a startup or a side hustle, you're gonna run into barriers. You might start something for a month or two and you might feel demotivated because your results aren't what you thought they would be. So that's when you take a step back and just say, I'm gonna commit to six months of this, or I'm gonna commit to one year of this. Don't let that like thought, that voice in your head stop you because it's inevitably it's gonna be there. And I knew the voice would be there. And it came a lot of times. It was pretty hard coming from CNBC where I could do a video that would get 100,000 views or a million views. And all of a sudden I'm not getting even a thousand views, right? It, it can take a toll on your, on your confidence and your ego. So the only way I knew I could get past that was to commit to consistency. And I wanna encourage you in in any facet of, of your life, whether it's in training or in, you know, as in sports or in your career, or maybe you have a side hustle or a side gig, 
like just commit to something because so many people, especially like, you know, millennials, Gen Z now, we have a lot of ideas. It's called shiny object syndrome. It's the idea that, oh my God, I could do a startup or oh my God, I could do this. Shiny object, like a baby or a kid sees a shiny object, they drop one object and they pick up another. And that is your enemy, my friend. So I hope that that has inspired you a little bit and I hope that you've enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more. And lastly, thank you so much for subscribing, for your support. And I think this is just the beginning of a lot of exciting times ahead.